This coming Sunday is our first year church anniversary. God's been leading us through the morning devotion in the last year. And we have prepared for overview for the last year. And I feel that God's been leading us through the songs too, the history of Israel. They Praise God and make known His deeds. Just feel like God's telling us it's right. One year you do review so that God can see God. And that's very important. Psalm 104 talks about we praise His power of today we see from. The, from his works, we can know him and can praise him. So really see that God is with us. It's like God's given us a confirmation. The first year anniversary, God will surely be with us. God is pleased with us. Psalm 105 are divided into five sections. First one to six, but the uh, five four praises revealing the history. And the first seven to first twelve, God keeps his eternal covenant. And the first thirteen to twenty-two, God's gift salvation to redeem Israel. And then first 23 to 36, God saved Israel out of Egypt. And then first 37 to the end, God sh uh, Israel should rejoice because of God. Should shout for joy. So these five sections refer back to the first sections and how we can praise God. First one, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing to him, sing praise to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wondrous works. So, it says here, we should give thanks to God and share what he has done. And first two, sing to him and then talk about his works. And then glory in his holy name. So you see this five-fold praises. The five important elements of worship. Give thanks. And make known his deeds, sing, talk, glory, boast about him. So worship and praise help people to see God also. As we worship him, God is magnified in our lives. So we can see God more clearly, know Him more clearly, more deeply. God has created heaven and earth. Our praise would not make God greater. We cannot add anything to God, otherwise He's not God. God is infinite, infinitely great. What can we add on to Him? Otherwise, He would not be infinite. So to worship is not to add anything to God, but worship is for 
for us. And then we can know God more and His, and He can be revealed more in our lives. So worship is like a channel, a way to help us draw close to God, to enter into His presence, and then God's presence and protection will be among us. Psalm 105 talks about the five four elements in worship. We give thanks to him, we give testimony about him. So actually worship is also a testimony for people to know him and we sing to him just like so he shared she composed ten uh, composed uh, anniversary songs for ten years for the mother church and we should talk about it and to review recall what he has done and then boast about his name to say or to proclaim it loudly. So this are the five praises to God. Verse 4, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face evermore. You see the five fold Praises after that, we find the threefold seeking. After praising God, fivefold praises, we can seek Him. That will not be put into shame. As we can draw close to God like that, you feel that your life is different because God will come to us. He he is enthroned in the praises of Israel. So praising God is like calling him, making a telephone call to him, calling on Heavenly Father, and he will re reply us, and he will come to us. So worship and praise is actually good for us. It's beneficial to us. So we worship and praise him, we can seek God, and then uh, our hearts will be full of joy because we don't need to be worried about anything as we worship Him. When we seek Him, God is with us. God will take care of us and we can enter into rest and enjoy the peace and joy and the strength and protection because God is our refuge, our shield, our strength. You see that then you can understand. Verse 5, remember his marvelous works which he, which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, servant, the children of Jacob, his chosen ones. So who should praise God and talk about his wondrous work? The descendants of Abraham. And today, all the New Testament believers, we are the children of Abraham by faith. So we have a covenant with God, and we should praise him, sing about him boast about his name and to know what he has done among us. Should we call his words? And then we can praise him from our hearts. So the praise, the Psalms are a good demonstration for us. The following four sections are demonstrations, examples of how we can praise Him. So how do they praise God? Through revealing, revealing God's works among Israel. Their history is about how they faced difficulties and God helped them. 
And our theme for the first year anniversary is Ride on Miracles. God used miracles to save his people and let them ahead. So it's like God's telling us this is right. The right theme you have set up. Because uh, confirming this theme we have through Psalm 105. First second, he's the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. So God is our, the Lord is our God. He has authority. In all the earth, he reigns over all the earth. He's such a glorious and awesome God. He gives judgment in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. That's our God, a God. He's an eternal God. So, our God is faithful. He keeps his word. He's firm to the end. Why? First 9 to 15. The covenant which is made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac and confirmed it to Jacob for a statue to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as the allotment of your inheritance when they were few in number, did very few and strangers in it. We just need to look at the story of Abraham that we can understand. He first made a covenant with Abraham. What kind of covenant is it? It's an It's a covenant with all the nations, involving all the nations. The covenant not only affected Abraham, but also all the nations. Otherwise, we won't have the identity as the children of God. So God made a covenant with Abraham, and which involves all the nations. He promised to him that your descendants will be like the sand on the, on the shore and the stars in the sky. So that's a covenant involving the nations, and God will never change this covenant and because of it. Isaac also inherited the covenant with Abraham, and it's still valid down all the thousand generations. God wants to give Canaan as the inheritance of the Israelites, even though they have been through exile, they were scattered to the ends of the world, but God brought them back and restored them as a nation. This country disappeared in the whole world for about a thousand years. But now, the nation of Israel has been restored. So we can see how God has been keeping his covenant. And this way, we have hope. And at that time, they were few in number and strangers in it. It's like Abraham and Isaac were only like strangers. And when they were still few in number, not noticeable, and Abraham couldn't even bear a child. God told him to become a father of the nations. And you see, that's the wonderful work of God. It's just someone who can 
So not even there a child, but when God chosen him, God grace and power came to him, and God kept his covenant. And this covenant is still valid today. And verse thirteen to twenty two. You see how God saved His people, so we should praise Him. Verse 13: When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, He permitted no one to do them wrong. Yes, He would build kings for their sake, saying, "Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophet no harm." That's the time in between, uh, from Isaac on through the generations. They didn't have the nation yet, and so they were like wandering from a place to another one. So even though it seems they were in a small group of people, God has been their protection and refuge, and God did not let anyone harm them. And so God will build the king for their six. And God said, "Do not touch my anointed ones. Do not my prophets no harm. God is their protection and the fortress. God protects them himself. And so nothing, no, no power or forces can harm them in this world. Verse 16. Moreover, he called for a famine in the land to destroy." All the provision of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They heard his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his. Elders' wisdom. So the psalmist revealed this history, the experience. Ex going into Egypt was also a special experience. It was a trial, but also a blessing. It was a highly civilized place and at that time, and the Israelites learned all the knowledge from the Egyptians, and they received great. To wealth from Egypt, but the process, the journey was not easy. God used the famine to force them to enter into Egypt, and God sent a man before them like a pioneer, Joseph, who was sold as a slave, and people bound his feet with fetters. But God's anointed one, Joseph, could not be bound. Verse 19. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. In Hebrew, it means purified also. So God's word purified him, so that he could rise up. And, and until God's word and Joseph's word would be fulfilled, Joseph prophesied. To the servants of Pharaoh, the cupbearer and the bread maker, and when the time came, Joseph was released. He was uh, imprisoned, sentenced to death, but then he could be released in a day. And became the prime minister of Egypt. Why could that happen? Because of the hand of God. God likes to play a game, to rebound from the bottom of a valley. All these heroes of faith, they were they rebound from the low points because of the hand of God. So we know that. God has such a power, we praise Him. That's the foundation of her faith. And after God's word to purify Joseph, and verse 22, to, um, 
that it let him burn his princess at his pleasure. I read the context. You see that it's not that he let him burn his princess at his pleasure. But God's wisdom is in Joseph. So Joseph light was like binding all the princes, the officials of Pharaoh. And then everyone's heart returned to him. It's like everyone's heart was bound. Everyone's heart was bound by Joseph. And so he could teach the elders. That means God, with his anointing and power, made all the elders and princes of Egypt submit to Joseph. Just imagine if you suddenly become the greatest one in the whole country, only under the king. How many people may want to rebel against you and not submit to you? But Joseph was made by God to be the Lord of Pharaoh's house. And Joseph could bind the hearts of all the Egyptian officials. Verse 23. Israel also came into Egypt, and jo Jacob dwelt in the land of Ham, increased his people greatly, and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. So the Hebrews became stronger and even stronger than the Egyptians. So the Egyptians oppressed them and made them slaves. And, but then the one God's chosen cannot be oppressed, cannot. Um, he, he sent Moses his servant and Aaron, whom he had chosen, they performed great signs among them and wonders in the land of hell. Sent darkness and make it dark, and they did not rebel against his word. He turned their waters into blood and killed their fish. Their land abounded with frogs, even in the chambers of their kings. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and lions in all the territory. He gave them hell for rain and flaming fire in the land. He struck their vines also and their fig trees and splintered the trees of the territory. He spoke and locusts came, young locusts without number, and ate up all the vegetation in the land and devoured the fruit of their ground and also destroyed all the firstborn in the, their land, the first of all their strength. So when the Israelites read the scriptures, they were touched because that's the experience. And God sent the ten plagues that, that in the end, Pharaoh really, uh, Pharaoh bowed down to God. And of course, the ten plagues were striking the forces of darkness behind the Egyptians' idols. So this ten plagues actually defeated all the witchcraft and power of the idols. 
so everyone in Egypt could know the Lord. That's what it says. We have to share the word of God so that God can see. Everyone can see God's power. And the reputation. Israel's reputation is spread all over the nations around them. And that was why they, uh, the nations were afraid when they heard that the Israelites were going into the land of Canaan. They heard about the miracle of dividing the Red Sea, how God led them to walk on dry land. So to the nations back then, that was a very shocking news. God's name was magnified among the nations because God could save us and overcome all the power of darkness. The enemy cannot overcome us because God is with us. Even the first one in Egypt, when they were struck down, actually firstborns represent the power, the strength, and the hope of the Egyptians. But then God could struck them. The last session, first 37 to the end, he also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them had fallen upon them. They spread a cloud for a country, a fire to give light in the night. And when the Israelites left, they were not empty handed, but they brought with them the silver and gold. There was no one feeble among them because God's power was with them. Even though they were weak, God was with them. The weak became strong. The small tribe would multiply thousands of times because God's glory was upon them and God was with them. God led them. That's our hope also. Even though we are very small and insignificant or weak, as long as God is with us, we are like the slaves at that time. They could overcome the greatest nation, and no one could block them. So Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them had fallen upon them. And the Egyptians were released when the Israelites left them, because Egyptians were afraid of them. The Egyptians were afraid of the God behind them. And all the power and strong forces of Egypt was, were taken away by the God of Israel. And verse 39, he spread a cloud for a company of fire to give light in the night. God is the source of light and power. The people ask him, when he brought the cloud, satisfy them with the bread of heaven. And God is wonderful. When the people complain that they have no food. God brought them well and satisfied them with manna. Manna represents Jesus, points to Jesus. He's the one who can truly satisfy us. And that's a spiritual satisfaction, which is more satisfying than the physical satisfaction. Verse 41, he opened the rock and water gushed out. It ran in the dry places like a river. God is the one who make a rain that does it. 
and a stream in the wilderness. So God's protection and provision will be with us. Even if we are in the wilderness, when God says, let there be a stream, a river, then there will be it. So God's been leading them in the wilderness. Their shoes were not even worn out in those 40 years journey in the desert. Every day was a miracle. Verse 42, for he remembered his holy promise in Abraham, his servant. He brought on his people with joy, his chosen ones with gladness. He gave them the lands of the Gentiles, and they inherited the labor of the nations. Why would this happen? Because God's, God is the one who keeps covenant, who remembers the covenant he made with Abraham, and to remember his relationship with Abraham. So, he let the people be filled with joy and they march forward with gladness. They were filled by God's power. And he gave them the lands of the Gentiles. They inherited the labor of the nations that they might observe his statutes and keep his law. God's given them the promised land and he said, this is a land flowing with milk and honey. Yet they, they are wells that you have not dug and gardens you have not planted. God gave them everything freely so they can enjoy. So what God has given us is not that we deserve that. God has given all these good things to us so that because he takes care of us today. What do we deserve on earth? Everything is God's grace. We give this less grace from God. We may not even be able to breathe. This whole world is not created by us. The air and the water is not created by us. Every good thing from in this world, in this earth, is made by God. God's given us them to us so that we should thank Him and praise His wondrous work. He gives all this to us. Just like the Israelites, they take from others what they have labored God's will is that we can keep his covenant his commandments is worthy of our praise so let's praise the Lord hallelujah may our eyes be open to see the wondrous work of God in our lives so that we can praise him from the bottom of our hearts and give him the five full praises Amen. Hallelujah. We serve a wonderful God. He's worthy of our praise. So let's rise and give thanks to Him for the wonders He has done, for good, for good He is in our lives. So we want to thank you and praise you, Lord.
Praise the Lord. He's a covenant-keeping God. He remembers his covenant. Let's praise him. Lift up his name. Only him is worthy. Lord, we praise you. Through Psalm 105, we see how you have led the Israelites. You are also in our lives. You lead us. You are covenant-keeping God. Keep your word. We lift up your name. Thanks for hearing God. Receive our worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we see that God remembers His covenant. Today we see that the psalmist tells us to call upon His name, make known His deeds among the peoples, talk of all His mouth wondrous works. To remember His works, His wondrous works. So just as we confess our sins, it's hard for us to confess all our sins completely. We all always have sins that we cannot confess. It. It is, and it's like a praise to God also. It's, it's impossible to tell how great it is God. God. Before on the first week, we read the Psalms of the whole week, telling us to give thanks to God, to praise Him. I want to help us, let's confess that we are not praising God enough. So we ask the Holy Spirit to help us today. Then we have a humble heart. I'm not like, oh, we should do this again to praise him. She's sick. Pastor told us it's actually good for us to have us connect more deeply with God before we enter into the first year anniversary. It's not just think it's an event, but with our hearts. This is what God values. Holy Spirit, we cry out to you right now. Confess that our thanksgiving heart is not enough. Do you know how to share great words? Holy Spirit, help us. Because of how low we are, we need you to lead us. So we can have the right heart to come before you. I need to praise God and boast about his name. Holy Spirit, help us. Give us a humble heart. We come before you. May you help us. Thank 
Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. And the psalmist says, Praise the Lord. How did he lead us? We should recall our low points. And the psalm says they were, the Israelites were few in numbers and they were wandering from nation to nation. This low point in their lives. So meditate and reflect how God has led them. And they were. Fourteen, God permitted no one to do them wrong, and He rebuked kings for their sins, saying, "Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm." So let's reflect the low points in our lives, how God has helped us. Can really name and talk about God's wondrous work. That's the first direction. Second direction, you see Joseph. He was sold as a slave. Verse 17. He brought her to his feet with fetters. He was laid in iron. God's word tested him. Until his words were, were fulfilled, sometimes we think we cannot praise God. I feel I feel justified in a poor condition, but we see that Joseph was betrayed by his own brothers. He was sold far away as a slave to Egypt, and he served faithfully. The wife of his master. Um, so we can see that actually God could purify us through the circumstance, and so we can give thanks to God even for our difficulty. So. Because we see that God is actually purifying our lives, so let ask the Holy Spirit to help us to proclaim His wondrous works in our lives. Now God has been purifying us and given us breakthroughs and changes. And we have learned to listen and follow and obey. In difficulties, in epidemic, in the famine, they could see miracles. Verse 37. God led his people out of Egypt and brought them out with silver and gold. And there was no one weak among his tribes. God's miracles were with them. And so the people rejoice. And God let them out, brought out his people with joy. His chosen ones with gladness, separate our hearts because we have God, we have miracles. Sunday is our first year church anniversary. Pastor Zoe has written a song for anniversary, so let's sing the song together. We will praise the Lord.
的性命挂掉。Give thanks to the Lord. We know His deeds among the people. Sing to Him. Talk of all His wondrous works. Glory in His holy name. This is the will of God. New Crop 6:1. Give thanks to God. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the people. New Crop 6:1. Brothers and sisters, sing to Him. Sing songs to Him. Talk of all his wondrous works. New crop six women, brothers and sisters. New crop six women, brothers and sisters. Glory in his holy name. 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 Enter into his. Name through glory and joy, the glory together with God. This should be our life. As we call and count and give thanks to the Lord, count His blessings, give thanks to Him. That's our life, and should be our experience. This is a gift that God wants to give to us for our first year anniversary. Receive by faith in our spirit, enter into such a reality. God wants us to enter in, into His glory. Let us be in God and let God be in us, just like the vine is one with the branches. So let us follow God closely, connect with Him closely. Let's receive the blessing. Jesus Christ, in my blessing, every brother, sister, Lord, Spirit be with you. Spirit be with you. We receive this life of worship and praise. Let's glorify His greatness, make known His deeds, and enter into His presence in glory, and let Him be the one we boast about. Let God give us such a life and faith, so that in the Spirit we can follow You closely wherever we go. We can give the praise you deserve as you take took care of the Israelites. Lord, may you take care of every one of us in apples of your eyes to help us to follow you closely. Hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, our morning devotion will end here. May the Lord bless you.